So solubility equilibrium, it applies to compounds that are not um, very soluble. They are not considered soluble compounds. A compound that is considered soluble, like NaCl, you have NaCl, you add to water Na plus and Cl minus. Okay. So for this compound, you don't write Ksp. You don't say uh, K expression because you say all of it would dissolve. It doesn't reach equilibrium with a limited amount of sodium chloride. If you have 100 milliliters of water, you can add 34.3 grams of sodium chloride. That's a lot of sodium chloride. It doesn't get saturated before that. But if you add 50 grams, of course, it's going to, uh, some of it, it will stay as crystals. It would settle down. So when we're talking about KSP, that's for compounds that are not very soluble. That means if you put a lot of this AgCl, only very small amount of Ag ion and chloride ion is going to be produced. This one dissociate 100 percent is a, it's like a strong electrolyte. We talked about strong electrolyte because it's soluble. It's 100 percent dissociation. This is not 100 percent dissociation. You get limited number of these. So you are going to write the K value. What is the K value? Remember, K was concentration of product over concentration of the reactants. And solids and liquids are not allowed. In this case, AgCl is solid. So we cannot write the AgCl solid here because it's not allowed. So I'm going to take it out. So we would just write the Ag plus and Cl minus. Okay. And this... It takes a specific name, and what is that specific name? Is a KSP, just like KA that is used for acid, KB that is used for base. KSP used for in salt ionic compounds that are not very soluble, and it's called K solubility product solubility product because if it dissolves it gives you this product so you get the ksp or k solubility product solubility product is written based on the products only remember like kinetic rate law was written only for reactants in this case solubility product is only written based on the product only raised to the power of coefficient. So for MgF2, solubility product would be Mg2 plus and F to the power of 2 because that's the coefficient. This is not a 2F, it's just F. Okay, just be careful with that. 2F or 2S is used when you are talking about the solubility, but when you are writing the solubility product, the concentration is just the concentration of the concentration of the fluoride. So magnesium ion, fluoride ion to the power of two. For Ag2CO3, two Ag, so Ag to the power of two, and then you have the carbonate concentration of the carbonate ion. Concentration of the first ion to the power of the coefficient, concentration of the second ion to the power of the coefficient that is the KSP expression for calcium phosphate. Now, you can use the value for KSP to determine if precipitate forms or not. Sometimes you add one drop of the reagent and precipitate doesn't form, but it says add enough until precipitate forms or add like 5-10 drops. It doesn't say with the one, one drop. Maybe it formed. It's like you have that. It's potentially, it could form precipitate, but the concentration is not high enough to form the precipitate. So if concentration of the ions is going to be higher than the KSP, 
precipitate will form. So this is the concentration at any given time. Ksp is for uh, equilibrium or saturation. If Q equals Ksp, that means you have a saturated solution. If Q or the concentration of the ions, this is the Q. If it's greater than the Ksp, then the excess amount will precipitate. So if you want to know if precipitate forms or not, you must have the value for Ksp. And then you should be given molar concentration for the ions and calculate the Q compared to Ksp. If Q is greater than Ksp, we know that precipitate is going to form. Some Ksp values are given. The greater the Ksp value, it means that compound is more soluble in water. These are all solubility in water, unless the solvent is specified what the solvent is. So which one is more soluble, lead chromate or lead fluoride? You look at the Ksp value. This one is much greater, so it's going to be lead fluoride is going to be more soluble than lead chromate because Ksp value for lead chromate is very small, is a minus 14 power. That is like six a million times actually, uh, 10 to 6 power, smaller than the Ksp for lead fluoride. So lead fluoride is more soluble than lead chromate, even though both of them will form precipitate if you have enough concentration of the lead and the other ion, but this one is more soluble. So that's the meaning for Ksp. The greater the value for Ka means a stronger acid. Greater value for Kb means a stronger base. But this is a Ksp. Okay, next, uh, um, what is the application for KSP? If you have the KSP, from the KSP value, you can find the concentration for each of the ions. So if you go back here, let's say you have the value for KSP, you can find the concentration for Mg2+, plus, because you can find the concentration for F-. minus. You have the value for Ksp, you could find this. So basically Ksp, if this we put X for this uh, concentration of Ag, X for concentration of Cl minus, then Ksp equals X square. You take the square root of both, then you end up with concentration or the value for X equals the square root of Ksp. So you can find the value for X, which is the concentration for silver ion concentration for chloride ion. Same thing here, if you have the X and you have the X here uh, or the 2X for this one, you can find the concentration if you have the Ksp. So if you have the Ksp, you find the concentration, you can find the molar solubility and solubility for the compound. Molar solubility, um, if you have the solubility of the compound, you can find the molar solubility. Your, you can find concentration for the ions. And you could find the case. If you have the concentration for cation and anion, you could find the case. So this is the application for it. So molar solubility is the number of moles of solute dissolved in one liter. But solubility is the, the amount that is soluble of the compound in, per liter, but is expressed in grams. So if you find the molar solubility, you multiply by the uh, molar molecular weight, 
we can change that to solubility because solubility is gram per liter. This is a mole per liter. So molar solubility versus the solubility. What's the solubility of silver chloride? When it says solubility, it actually it tells you the gram per liter, but even if it doesn't say gram per liter, that means uh, solubility means gram per liter. If it says molar solubility, it would be mole per liter. How do you find the solubility? You must have the value for KSV. You write the solubility equation. If AgCl dissolves, it would give you Ag plus and 1 Cl minus. At the beginning, you have 0 when it dissolves. This is like before it dissolves. Uh, it's going to give you S and S. S is same thing as X that we use for acid and base. But here, because it's solubility, they just use S as a symbol. At the equilibrium, then, is going to be S plus 0, which is S. S plus 0 is S. Now, you write the KSP expression. KSP expression for AGCL. You replace the numbers. S square. S times S would be S square. And for S would be square root of the KSP. So this is the molar solubility. Molar solubility, same thing as um, molar solubility or the value for S by convention. They are using S for molar uh, solubility. In order to change the solubility, you must change that to gram. So if you have the molecular weight for AgCl, you find the molar solubility first multiplied by the molar mass to give you the gram of that dissolves in liter, which is the solubility. So that's the difference. If you want to work it backward, like the these are some shortcuts that you can uh, you can memorize it, or you can set up the equation all the time. It's not, uh, it's not, you don't, this is not a requirement, but it's going to save you time in order to, uh, to if you have it memorized, rather than setting it up. Um, setting it up, KSB is this value. If you place X, uh, S for each one of them, then KSB equals S squared, then S would be, square root of case for this one the same thing s2 because the exponents are this one of one so it's very similar to the top one for exponents here is two and one so you have a two s and then s for the two s and s then it would be four s cubed so the va to find the value for s you would First, divide both sides by 4 and then take the um, root, cubic root. Form. So this is, these are just the shortcut, and I'm sure you can memorize it or come up with. Will a precipitate form? OK, so we want, we want to identify the species. The species that we have here is the hydroxide ion and then we have uh, we have the calcium ion because we know that Na is not going to form precipitate with Cl because it's uh, it's considered soluble compound so if you're combining these two the possible uh, compounds that they can form is the calcium hydroxide or sodium chloride. Which one should we study if it's going to form? If anything, this will form first before this one. This Your solution must be saturated. That means more than 34 gram per 100 milliliter. That's a lot of salt. So we don't have to worry about that. We are trying to see if this is going to form or not. In order to find this is going to form or not, we have the we have to have the value for KSP for calcium hydroxide, which we have it, a KSP for calcium hydroxide, KSP value for calcium hydroxide. 
is given in the tables and is the eight point for exam question it would be given in the question but for homework or powerpoints like this because it's the open resource it will be given in the uh, tables so we have the value for ksp now we need to find the value for q uh, q for calcium hydroxide is going to be the calcium ion ca2 plus concentration of the hydroxide ion to square now if this value is calculated for q then we compare it if q is greater than ksp then yes precipitate will form so in order to calculate the q we need the concentration for ca2 plus we already have the concentration for ca2 plus because we know we have the 0.1 molar We have the 0.1 molar of the calcium um, calcium ion. The uh, concentration of the hydroxide ion, we have 0.2 molarity, 2 milliliters. So molarity times volume in liter, that gives you the number of moles divide by in the one mole, one liter that we have so it's going to be uh, 0 0.2 times 0 0.002 liters so that's where this OH is coming from that is we are we want to find the concentration for OH concentration for OH is going to be molarity concentration for OH minus equals molarity times volume of OH minus divide by volume of the solution. This is going to be in liter. Volume of the solution. Which is the one liter in this case. So molarity is 0.2 times 0 0.002 and that equals 0 0.0002 okay. or I'm sorry 4 is a 2 times 2 so this is going to be 4 times 10 to negative 4 so we have the concentration for hydroxide ion the information is not given straight directly it's the indirect information that is given to you and you are expected to find the concentration of hydroxide ion first so you have the concentration for calcium ion because is one liter and you have the molarity and then the concentration for hydroxide ion this amount it needs to be calculated in the new volume that when we have been we find this value is this greater than ksp or less than ksp ksp value is 10 to 6 q value is 10 to 8 so it's smaller than ksp and because it's smaller than ksp no precipitate is going to form so that's one of the application for solubility to find out if the if the uh, precipitate is going to form or is not going to form. The uh, common ion effect. We started the first slide for this chapter with the common ion effect. If you have the common ion added, the equilibrium is going to shift to the reactant side. So basically the solubility is going to be decreased. So if I have a solution that contains already some BR, when I'm adding AGBR, solubility is going to decrease because I have high concentration of BR minus and it's going to shift the reaction to the reactant side. So that means less solubility for AGBR.
So solubility is going to be, can be calculated for HGBR. If we have the KSP value, is going to be uh, a square root of KSP because we only have one and two if you are using shortcut. Solubility S equals square root of KSP um, because S2 equals KSP in this case. And S is the ions. The exponents are one or coefficient is one. And this was the shortcut to find the molar solubility. The solubility for HGBR is 10 to negative 7. Now, if I was going to find the solubility in presence of the Br minus, I'm going to use the concentration of the of the uh, Br minus from the given value, and it's going to be this value plus the S, what is coming from S. But since the value for KSP is such a small number, I can approximate and say concentration of a Br minus is going to be equal. This is approximately 0 0.001. So basically, I'm approximating this. So Br minus times Ag. So S is going to be calculated 10 to negative 10, a smaller value. Why we are getting lower solubility? Because of the common ion effect. So the equilibrium is going to be shift to the reactant side. Okay. Any questions? I see few of you are here. Do you have any questions? I know that and I understand it's past the class time and if you are doing other assignments it's fine. But if you are here and if you have questions, you let me know. That's why I left these blank slides so I can answer your questions. But if you don't ask me questions, I'm just going to continue to the next slide. Okay. Uh, pH and the solubility. Uh, hydro magnesium hydroxide is not a soluble compound. So if it's not soluble, we can have the KSP expression for it. We could have the ion product for it. Because when uh, added to water, it would give you um, few ions of magnesium and hydroxide. Now, if you increase the concentration of hydroxide ion, basically, if you increase the pH of the solution, you're increasing concentration of hydroxide ion. The reaction is going to shift to the, to the left where less compound would be soluble. That means a precipitate would form. What happens if you lower the pH? Lowering pH meaning adding H+. If you add H+, is going to react with hydroxide ion. And H plus plus OH minus, it would give you H2O. Okay, it would give you H2O. That means this is going to be removed. OH is going to be removed from the equilibrium. And based on Le Chatelier's principle, more of the MgOH2 is going to dissolve. So in acidic solution, this compound is going to dissolve. In basic solution, it's not going to dissolve or is going to precipitate. So that's how the pH affects the solubility. So based on the common ion that we have. So if we have um, insoluble base, they can dissolve in acidic solution. If it doesn't, if a base doesn't dissolve in water, it can dissolve in acidic solution. If the acid doesn't dissolve in water, it can dissolve in basic solution. Okay. So it's the acid dissolves in basic solution and base dissolves in acidic solution. A um, complex ion also, it can form, it depends on the concentration. So when the complex ion is trying to form, again, just like KSP, if this value is going to be greater, um, if it's a high value, 
concentration of the product over the reactant is high value. That means this complex ion is stable and is going to uh, form. So Kf is equilibrium constant for formation of complex ions. Complex ions, they form more with the transition metals that they form like complex ion. When you have the metal cation that is bonded to other uh, ions and is still forming an ion, is not forming a compound, is forming a complex ion. Um, AG, this also used in the last unit, which is the coordination compound. You will see these complex ions there. Um, so AG with ammonia, it can form a uh, complex ion. That means if you have uh, like silver ions and then you add ammonia, you can basically dissolve it because the case value K formation is very high. So it changes to ionic product and it would dissolve. So complex ion formation, if you have high value for the KF, that means it forms and is going to be uh, stable. So if you have the zinc compound, you have a compound that has zinc ion, you add ammonia, ammonia is going to dissolve the zinc precipitate because it's forming this complex ion. Same thing for cobalt is going to uh, form the, uh, the ion. But you see how high is this value for Kf comparing to zinc. So if you add, uh, if you add less ammonia, first cobalt would dissolve, would form the complex ion, and then the, then the zinc. So some ions are soluble in acidic, others are soluble in basic solution. So when you have the um, cations that you can group them, basically if you're taking the lab, most of the labs, they start with this cation analysis to give time for kinetic, thermodynamic, everything to be covered in lecture. Uh, but you see here that uh, if you have group 1, group 1 cations, if you add HCl, they precipitate. So Ag um, and mercury uh, 1 and lead is going to form a uh, precipitate with a very low Ksp value. So Ksp value is low. That means it's going to precipitate quickly. So it will precipitate. Uh, if you remember lead Chloride would dissolve in water. You see that one. this one has higher Ksp compared to the uh, AgCl. So it's more soluble than AgCl because it has higher value for Ksp. Now, it might make more sense because you have the numerical value to uh, compare. So lead chloride dissolves in hot water, but AgCl doesn't dissolve because lead chloride is more soluble than the silver chloride. <laughs> Bismuth with the H2S in acidic solution is going to, bismuth, cadmium, and copper is going to form uh, precipitate in acidic solution. In basic solution, aluminum and cobalt, chromium, uh, these are going to form precipitate in the basic solution. So some of them in acidic solution and others in basic solution. So if you have group 2 and 3 with the H2S mixed in acidic solution, this would precipitate. You can centrifuge and separate them. And these would be in a basic solution. They would precipitate and you would. Uh, so if you want to dissolve this, you add acid, it would dissolve. If you want to precipitate, you add base, it would precipitate. So if they have all cations, you add HCl, group 1 is going to precipitate. Um, then the remaining of the cations, when you add H2S, um, they would precipitate. And then you can then, in acidic and basic, you can change them. In the basic solution, only the 
these cobalt, iron, and manganese, these are going to precipitate. And then you have some carbonates that the group that will precipitate with the carbonate. And then these will not form precipitate no matter what. They're always soluble. Compounds that they have sodium, potassium, or ammonium, they would be always soluble. So with the ammonium, um, if you add if you add base to it, it's going to give you a smell of ammonia because it would release NH3 and you can detect that you have ammonium ion. With these two, you can test it with flame and look for the flame. If you have the sodium, it would give you bright yellow color. If you have the potassium color, uh, it would give you different color and then copper. And this is for uh, lithium. So you have different color of the uh, flame. So flame tests can help you with the compounds that you cannot, the ions that you cannot precipitate. Okay, I didn't get any new questions. So I'm going to uh, stop the recording at this point and post it for you to 